A sudden spike in the electricity bill. In a rush, I called the power company. An employee comes over and with a puzzled look says, did you notice this wire before? When Bob and I rush over, the employee gently moves a potted plant nearby to give us a clearer view from our outdoor outlet. A strange wire extended, leading towards my in-law's house. Do you know anything about this wire? Bob and I exchanged glances at the employee's question. We're probably both thinking the same thing. Hey, Bob, could this be? Yeah, no doubt about it. This is why our electric bill went through the roof. Bob almost instinctively reaches for the outlet and swiftly unplugs the wire. The very next moment, a sharp scream echoes from my in-law's direction. What? It's probably my mother-in-law's. Soon after, I hear some hysterical muttering. The voice grows louder coming from behind their door and heading our way. Suddenly, my mother-in-law bursts out from the bushes. My name is Mary Johnson, a 32-year-old stay-at-home mom. My hobby is trying out limited-time desserts. I always gather information about desserts either through friends or by doing my own research. Bob, my kind husband, always supports my hobbies. I've known Bob, who's the same age as me since college. From the time we met up until now, I've always adored his consistent kindness. By the way, I also had a deep fondness for my in-laws who raised such a wonderful man. Many of my married friends often complain about issues with their mothers-in-law. I've even heard stories about marriages ending due to issues with the mother-in-law, but thankfully such tales have nothing to do with our household. My mother-in-law, like me, is a fan of desserts. Whenever I bring her a recommended treat, she's always delighted. And my father-in-law, though a man of few words, always has a reassuring smile. Both of them have always been fond of me, and I felt the same about them. My in-laws currently live about a 30-minute drive away. Not too close, but not too far either, just the right distance. But sometimes I wonder, with the two of them, maybe we could live together. It's not that I want to live together, but perhaps we might get along better than expected. I adored them enough to even entertain such thoughts. However, I come to realize that life isn't always that sweet. One day I was thrown off by the news I got from Bob. What? Your parents. Turns out my in-laws were moving into the vacant house next door. I had always assumed they owned their place, but it seems they were actually renting. Their house had gotten old, so it appears they were considering moving when they found out about the empty house next to ours. They jumped on the opportunity. It is a sudden short-distance habitation. I was immediately consumed by anxiety. Up until now, I've gotten along with my in-laws without any issues. I wonder if it'll be okay. Living next door means that if we're up for it, we can see each other every day. I do like my in-laws, but to be honest, seeing them daily is a bit much. But it's not like I can suddenly say that it's too close and not to move here. Actually, when we heard about the move, Bob gently advised his parents, maybe you shouldn't. But they didn't want to hear it, saying, we get along so well now, it'll be fine. I thought we could even live together. I want to smack my overly optimistic self for thinking that way. As my anxiety grew, my in-laws moved in. We greeted them cautiously, but at first, things seemed okay. We maintained a good distance and set some boundaries. But as they started to feel more at home, my mother-in-law began to push boundaries like never before. She was acting out every single, don't do this behavior you hear about in the grapevine. Dropping by without calling ahead became her usual and once she's in, she'd act like it was her own house. And not only that, it was like they were checking our every move. Then on the day my mother-in-law paid an unannounced visit and checked on our dinner, she said something outrageous. Hey, Mary, I've been thinking. Maybe you could stop locking the door. What? I couldn't believe my ears. Can you believe it? In this day and age, my mother-in-law is suggesting I leave our house unlocked. Not locking the door means not knowing who could walk in at any time. 
That's just not comforting. It's obviously a bad idea. Ever since my mother-in-law moved nearby, even the doorbell ringing makes my heart race. Now there's the possibility she could just walk into our home without us even knowing. I'm certainly not okay with that, with how things are lately. I've got to admit, not locking the door feels kind of scary. Trying to keep things light, I declined with a smile. But she frowned and replied, Oh, Mary, you're such a warrior. But don't fret. I'll tell our neighbors to look out for you. And don't forget your father-in-law and I are here too. We'll be popping in frequently. I understand her words come from a good place, and I appreciate that. That's why I couldn't bring myself to tell her how burdensome her frequent visits had become. But everyone has their limits. Last week, it felt like she had perfect attendance at our home. I have tea with my mother-in-law at our home every day. Naturally, spending this much time together, it's no wonder some grievances arise. I've come to truly understand that a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationship is all about the right distance. She would leave unnecessary potted plants in our yard or plant flowers without asking. It's like she does whatever she wants. Now if it was once every few months, I could tolerate it. But every day is a different story. Since the locking incident, she's brought it up several times. I managed to convince her by saying I was just a wife with strong security concerns. However, with that settled, my mother-in-law then started pleading, I'd like a spare key. I knew I had to get Bob to refuse her request. Handing such a powerful item to her now is just out of the question. Though I found myself at odds with how she behaves, I didn't quite dislike her. She can be meddlesome, but I know it comes from my mother-in-law's good intentions. Rather, I felt more guilt for rejecting her than anything else. But as time passed, those feelings began to change. Whether it was me changing, my mother-in-law changing, or both, I can't be sure. However, I started to feel discomfort and irritation with her comments. It was a few months after she moved in. By then, it had become a routine for my mother-in-law to visit after lunch. I once asked about my father-in-law, and it seems he usually goes for walks or shopping alone. I suggested she should join him, but she declined, saying, walking tires me out. Lately, she's become a typical mother-in-law. Previously, when I made her tea, she'd just say thank you. But now, there's always a comment like, it's lukewarm or it's weak. Whenever she speaks, it's either gossip or bad-mouthing someone. Being around her just brings me down. But I can't exactly reject her, so I just nod and force a smile. It's just not good, right? The grass keeps growing and they never cut it. I've even thought about mowing it myself. Today, my mother-in-law was fervently discussing a neighbor's consistently neglected yard, so I was saying, oh, when my mother-in-law suddenly stopped talking. I instinctively followed her gaze to the bookshelf. Did she find a book that piqued her interest? It'd be peaceful if we could just read together. Did you find a book you're interested in? As I was about to approach the bookshelf, she reached past it, grabbing something from the rack next to it. Susan, you shouldn't touch that. Upon seeing what she took, I hastily reached out, but she just innocently opened it, and then she exclaimed with delight, Oh, my Mary dear. Oh, dear, didn't you overspend last month? Goodness, your electricity bill is twice as much as ours. What my mother-in-law was looking at, as if she were reading a weekly magazine, was our household account book. Stop, give it back. When I hurriedly snatched it away, my mother-in-law laughed softly. You really don't have to be so flustered, but Mary, it seems like you're not so good at saving money. Bob must feel bad having a wife who struggles with budgeting. You should try a bit harder, okay? I could feel my face heat up. Both the front and back covers clearly stated the household account book. Still, she took the plunge and opened someone else's household account book. I couldn't believe it. And about those desserts, I have a soft spot for limited edition treats too, so I get the urge. But if you can't even save a dime, do you think you really deserve to indulge in sweets? 
Furthermore, my mother-in-law kept on nagging, saying things like, you spend way too much on food, and the electricity bill is outrageous. On top of that, she boasted about how frugal she was. After ranting for a while, she seemed satisfied and left. After my mother-in-law left, I was so moved that I couldn't stop crying. The accumulated stress might have played a part, too. I've reached my breaking point. I cried nonstop until Bob came home. You don't have to take Mom's word for it, but I think it's easier said than done. I'm really sorry. I'll tell Mom not to come again. Yeah, please. Bob comforted me, and after I calmed down a bit, I decided to discuss something that had been bothering me. It was about the electricity bill. As my mother-in-law pointed out, it was high without any significant changes in our usage. It had skyrocketed over the past few months. I was concerned about it, but dealing with my mother-in-law had left me little time to think about anything else. Bob looked at the electricity bill details, puzzled. This is definitely strange. I know, right? The next bill is coming soon, isn't it? If it seems off, we should give the electric company a call. A few days later, a bill arrived charging us an astonishing $1,300 more than double our usual amount. Feeling that something was amiss, we hurriedly decided to have someone from the electric company come over. The electric company's technician took a detailed look around. Then he pointed out something peculiar and called us over. Did you know about this wire? As Bob and I approached, the technician gently moved a potted plant to make it visible to us. It was hidden by the long leaves, but there was an external outlet there we'd forgotten about since we'd never used it since building the house. From that outlet, as the technician mentioned, a wire extended, leading towards my in-law's house. Do you know anything about this wire? At the technician's question, Bob and I exchanged glances. We were both likely thinking the same thing. Hey, Bob, could this be? Yeah, no doubt about it. This is the reason our electric bill shot up. To be sure, we followed the wire with the technician, pushing through bushes and tall weeds. Sure enough, the wire led to my in-law's storage shed. We couldn't see where it connected from here, but it was clear that it had something to do with the in-law's house. The technician, with a stern look, asked, Do you want me to call the police? No, we might have to, but let's talk it out first. This house belongs to our parents, after all. The worker initially looked tense, suspecting theft of electricity. But upon realizing it was a family home, his expression softened with relief. Oh, I see. I'll be on my way then. Yes, thank you for taking the time to come out here. We really appreciate it. We walked him out to his vehicle and saw him off. After he left, we turned to each other, deep in thought. Bob sighed heavily, craddling his head in his hands. I'm sorry for having a mother like that. It's hard to say, don't worry about it. What are we going to do next? If it's like any other day, Bob's parents are probably home right now. Should we confront them directly, or should we come up with a plan first? Bob, with his hand covering his mouth, started walking towards the external outlet. Thanks to the employee who had moved the potted plant aside earlier, the outlet was clearly visible. Come to think of it, perhaps his mother purposely placed the potted plant here to hide this outlet. Though I hate to suspect I couldn't think of any other reason. I wonder what this is connected to. Suddenly Bob reached out and swiftly unplugged the wire. Wait, is it okay to unplug that? I just unplugged it. Thinking of them calmly stealing our electricity all this time makes me so angry. Anyway, we have the employee as a witness. I won't let them make any lame excuses. If need be, we have that as well. That's true. I nodded in agreement. Suddenly, a high-pitched scream rang out from Bob's parents' house. Probably my mother-in-law's. Moments later, Hysterical muttering was heard. The voices came out of their door and started heading in our direction. And then, with great momentum, mother-in-law burst out from behind the hedge. What she must not have expected anyone to be there. When mother-in-law saw us, she let out a deeply surprised voice. 
No, I'm surprised you guys. What are you doing in a place like that? She snapped at us. So I puffed up my chest and responded, Susan, do you have some business in our yard? You seemed pretty flustered, didn't you? Well, that's... She looked away, visibly uncomfortable. Beyond her, Bob was holding onto the removed wire firmly. When my mother-in-law exclaimed, Oh, she tried to snatch it from Bob's hand. Bob twisted away, hiding the wire behind his back. Hey, what are you doing? No, that's what I should be asking you. Bob thrust the wire in front of her face and said, in a deep, serious voice, This was plugged into our outlet, you know, emphasizing the R. My mother-in-law's eyes darted around for a moment. Then she looked upwards defensively. So what? Do you know where this wire goes? I have no idea. Just plug it back in now. Things are a mess here since you pulled it out, she said, panicked. How can she ask to plug it in without even knowing where it's connected to? Plus, she's basically admitting she suffered because it was unplugged. It's almost like she's confessing that she did it, but my mother-in-law didn't seem the least bit guilty. She was just completely panicked. I knew why she was so flustered. Standing next to Bob, I smiled reassuringly. Susan, please calm down. How can we plug in a wire when we don't know where it leads? This is our outlet, isn't it? It's no big deal to plug it in, it's just for a moment, so please. Oh, Susan, remember what you told me. Not to waste even a bit of electricity, saying how Bob was unfortunate to have a wife who couldn't even save on electricity. Well, that was, she started to fidget. I won't make it in time. I heard her mutter under her breath. What time is it now? Well, it's 9.57. Oh, no, I'm done for. After that exclamation, mother-in-law, stumbling all the way, hurriedly left. Bob was puzzled by his mother-in-law's strange behavior, and I knew the reason behind it. Huh? Is that what you meant? So if we keep hanging around like this, she'll show up again. That's right. Bob tossed the wire aside, and we headed back inside the house. A short while later, I heard a rattling sound at the front door, followed by the doorbell ringing. This is my mother-in-law. I unlocked the door and opened it. Hello, Susan, continuing from what I said earlier. Enough of your chatter. Move over. As soon as the door opened, my mother-in-law pushed me aside and entered. She was visibly upset. Her footsteps thundered like a monster's as she made her way to the living room and then heavily flopped onto the sofa. Bob, who was in the living room, furrowed his brows with a puzzled expression and was about to speak, but my mother-in-law was a tad quicker. Oh, I'm parched. Hey, is the tea not ready yet? You're so slow. Act before being told. That's basic etiquette, right? Ah, uh, yes, and another thing. Why do you always lock the door? Everyone in the neighborhood says I have a cold daughter-in-law. There's nothing worth stealing in this house anyway. It's just so pretentious. It's annoying, she continued to grumble. Oh, this is hopeless. I can't stand it anymore. I grabbed the half-drunk plastic bottle nearby and slammed it down on the table in front of my mother-in-law. She sat there, her eyes wide and frozen in shock. Ah, oh, Mary, here you are, your water. And you said there's nothing worth stealing in this house. But sadly, there are greedy and sneaky people out there. For example, people who sneak steal electricity. I could see the panic on my mother-in-law's face. I sat right next to her. My mother-in-law didn't have the courage to look at me, even though I was right next to her. She stared before her, her face pale. Mary, what's wrong? You don't seem like yourself. Really, Susan? Even I have my limits. Did you think I was a god or something? I tried to lighten the mood with jokes, but she was as frightened as if she had seen a demon. My mother-in-law asked Bob for help, but he just shook his head. Next to her was her daughter-in-law who turned demon, and a few feet away was Bob who was unwilling to help her given the circumstances. My mother-in-law's next move was predictable. I'm sorry, I remembered that I have something to do, so I'm going to go. You're not going anywhere, are you? 
I pushed my mother-in-law's shoulder hard as she tried to get up from the couch. Her back sank deep into the sofa. Mary, I really need to. You were the one who said you were thirsty, weren't you? You made such a fuss, and now you say you can't drink water. That's pretty hypocritical, don't you think? Tears filled her eyes as she reached for her bottle, but this time Bob stopped her. My mother-in-law seemed relieved for a moment, but she didn't want me to drink the leftover. The real problem begins now. When did you start stealing our electricity? You often accuse me of stealing. That's a terrible thing to say. But the wire that's plugged into my outlet actually comes from your house, right? My mother-in-law couldn't come up with a good excuse, and she opened and closed her mouth several times, wondering if she could somehow bluff her way out of the situation. To be honest, she has no way out of this situation. Is she stupid? All she has to do now is admit it and apologize, I thought so. But it seemed like fate had thrown my mother-in-law a lifeline. The doorbell rang. So when I went to see it, it was my father-in-law. Is Susan here? Apparently, my father-in-law had gone out for a bit of shopping. When he returned home, the front door was not locked, and the TV was still on, but his wife was nowhere to be seen. He must have been worried. Seeing her lifeline, my mother-in-law ran to him, tears streaming down her face. My father-in-law seemed quite embarrassed by his wife's distraught appearance. That's when Bob stepped in and explained everything from the start. After thinking for a while, he began to speak slowly. Um, isn't there some kind of mistake? Of course, he would find it hard to believe that his own wife had been secretly stealing electricity from their son's house. Then, who did the wiring? Do you think a complete stranger would go through the trouble of connecting someone else's wiring to another person's house? My father-in-law crossed his arms and was deep in thought. He nodded and said, Let's go and have a look first, and stood up. But my mother-in-law exclaimed, clearly flustered and trying to intervene. However, my father-in-law asked Bob to show him what was happening and walked towards the power outlet. The wiring seemed to trail off into a storage shed and couldn't be seen from where they were. When my father-in-law investigated and returned, the color had drained from his face. I'm so sorry. I truly am. Apologize to them now, and my mother-in-law was like, I'm sorry, just like a child. My father-in-law said the wires went to the battery and were connected to my mother-in-law's computer via an extension cord. The battery was purchased when she moved to a new house. Not only during emergencies, but apparently a salesman told her that it's cost-effective to store electricity during the cheaper nighttime hours and then use it during the day. And my mother-in-law actually did it. She used the house's electrical outlet to store electricity at night and used it in her home during the day. At first, that was all she did, but her extension cord had an unused socket, so she apparently started plugging in her computer and other home appliances. Eventually, she started receiving electricity from our house all day, not just at night. My mother-in-law justified her actions by saying, I heard it was more economical. Naturally, I was annoyed that she was stealing the electricity without permission. But what made me even more angry was that despite my mother-in-law's constant criticism and belittling towards me, she was lying the entire time. You often said how Bob is so unlucky to have a wife who can't save money and how I buy sweets but can't even save a dime, didn't you? That's true, isn't it? Her lack of remorse was considerable. Just saving money on your electricity bill by using someone else's electricity doesn't mean you're saving money. That's just theft, I continued further. And just so you know, I won't let this slide just because we're family. If you don't sincerely apologize, we'll have no choice but to involve the police. My mother-in-law looked surprised for some reason. Did she think she could pull it off? What a wife you are. Are you saying that you would betray me, your own family? Don't twist things. We're a family, and we just want to make sure things are right. I took out my phone. Evidence? You have no evidence. With all this evidence, do we need more? 
If so, let us provide you with something more conclusive. I pointed towards the roof. My mother-in-law strained her eyes to see, then her face paled. Yes, our house had security cameras installed by sheer coincidence. The area around the outlet was within the camera's range. My mother-in-law let out a soft, ah, uh, in distress. Is this enough proof? Oh, one more thing, is there more? Today was the release date for the limited edition dessert, so you were in a really big hurry, right? No way, I flashed her a cheeky smile. Yes, I had a friend buy it for me, so I was able to secure it safely. If you hadn't been so obsessed with siphoning electricity, you might have been able to buy it online. What a shame. My mother-in-law fell to the ground, trembling and helpless. After talking with Bob, we decided not to report my mother-in-law to the police. She admitted her wrongdoing and we had evidence. But it was more troublesome than anything, and since she was our family, there was a chance that it would be ignored. Instead, we decided to have my in-laws pay for the electricity used and additional compensation for the inconvenience. Living in close quarters meant things were bound to get awkward, but that determination was necessary for my peace of mind. My in-laws seemed to feel the tension as our interactions decreased. One day we received some happy news. They were returning to their old house. Apparently, rumors of electricity theft were being spread, especially about my mother-in-law. She got quite upset and started crying, saying she wanted to go back to her previous house. By the way, I thought that my mother-in-law had good relations with her neighbors, but it turns out that she did not. She was just being treated like a fragile object. After paying us and the moving expenses, my in-laws were left lamenting that they were out of money. However, we're absolutely not going to help them out. I hope they cut back on their beloved sweets and manage on their own. On the other hand, now that my mother-in-law is gone, I've been living life to the fullest every single day. Our electric bill has significantly reduced, and I'm currently debating which dessert to treat myself to next.